Hello everyone. In this video, I'll be going over the 2005 APCSA FRQ exam, or mainly the question one from the FRQ exam. So, well, I guess we just start with reading the question first, because well, we kind of need to. So this question is regarding the arrays and array list topics in the exam. So just keep that in mind. In this question, you'll implement two methods for a class hotel that is part of a hotel reservation system. The hotel class uses the reservation, reservation class shown below. Uh, reservation is for the person and room number specified when the reservation is constructed. So in other words, whenever we make a reservation, there are two variables for it. The person, that is his name, and the room number, which is pretty self-explanatory. An incomplete declaration for the hotel class is shown below. Each hotel in the hotel reservation system has rooms numbered 0, 1, 2, and up to the last room number in the hotel. For example, a hotel with 100 rooms would have rooms numbered 0, 1, 2, all the way to 99. Write the hotel method request room. Method request room attempts to reserve a room in the hotel for a given guest. If there are any empty rooms in the hotel, one of them will be assigned to the named guest and the newly created reservation is returned. If there are no empty rooms, however, the guest is added to the end of the waiting list and null is returned. So if we look back at the incomplete declaration, we see the array list wait list. This is where the guests who uh, are trying to register but do not have an empty room uh, will go. So this is the first question that we have to answer. We need to write the hotel method request room. So how do we do this? Well, I already have the code here actually. So basically what we want to do is check the list of rooms available and every time, anytime we find a empty room, the first empty room, that is where the, well, the guest will go, we'll book it. Otherwise, we'll have to just add the guest to the waitlist and then return out. And that's what this code does. I mean, in its current stage, it won't run, obviously, because it's not in a class, it's just separate, but it does clearly show what you're supposed to do. So there's the for loop that iterates over the entire uh, list of rooms. And then inside it is the if statement, which checks if the room that we are checking right now is empty or null, then we just set that to the new reservation object with the person name and well, room number, which is just I in this case. And then we return that. Otherwise, outside the for loop, if nothing happened, in other words, this return didn't get triggered, we know that uh, we didn't find a room, so we just add that guest name to the waitlist and then return now. So what are the requirements for part A to get a full score? Well, looking here, this part is worth four points. You get one point for the loop over the rooms in which half of that is the actual attempt and the other half is uh, it working. Then you get another half point for when, the, when we are correctly checking for an empty room in the rooms array in context of the loop of this. And then we get another one and a half points for handling a new reservation inside the loop. So we get half point for creating it or at least attempting to, and then half point for it actually creating it, it working. And then another half point for returning that reservation. Unless of course uh, it doesn't work, in which case we have an extra condition, a plus one point for handling the wait list after the loop, which is this part here.
these last two lines. And then you obviously have uh, that being one half, adding the new guest of the end at the end of the waitlist and then returning null. So let's look over part B. Write the hotel method cancel and reassign. Method cancel and reassign releases a previous reservation. If the waiting list for the hotel contains any names, the vacated room is reassigned to the first person at the beginning of the list. That person is then removed from the waiting list and the newly created reservation is returned. If no one is waiting, the room is marked as empty and no is returned. And we are also given the note saying that in writing cancel and reassign, you may call any accessible methods in the reservation and hotel classes. Assume that these methods work as specified. Complete method cancel and reassign. So, well, like part A, I also have this ready. So basically, well, we just do what it says. We release a room or rather set it to empty. And then we check if oh, there's anyone in the wait list. And if there is, we just take the first person waiting in line, which will be at index zero for our purposes, and then set that to the newly vacated room. Otherwise, we just set it to empty as always. So in the program, we would get an index as that room number, which we are talking about. And then we have an if else statement. The if this handles, this whole thing would handle the waitlist uh, scenario. So if the waitlist, if there's more than one person waiting, then we take that one person and get his name and then put that for the reservation, which we just emptied. If there is no one waiting, then we just set it to now. And then we return it. So either way, we are going to either return a new reservation or now. So that case is covered. Going back to the grading criteria for part B, we see that this one is worth five points. So the whole thing's nine points total. So we get one point for looking up the room number with half a point being the attempt and the half a point actually working. Then we have another half point, which is to test whether the wait list is empty, which is where that whole if else statement comes in. Then we get another two and a half points for handling the non-empty waitlist scenario, in which half point is where we get the first entry from waitlist. And then another half point for creating that new reservation, which is this part here. And then yet another half point for assigning that to the correct room, that is the one that we just vacated, which we are achieving by getting the index in the first place. And then another half point for removing only the first entry from the wait list, assuming it's not empty, obviously, in which case we are indeed doing that by calling this waitlist.remove of zero. And then finally, we return, uh, we get a half point for returning that reservation, which is being handled at the very end, which means it will work for both cases, including this empty case, which we get a plus 1.4, half of which is assigning null to the room when it is empty, and then returning that. And the other half point for returning that, which again is handled outside the FL state. So one thing you should note with these problems is that uh, this is going to be obviously written. You'd have to write this with pen and, and on paper. So anything like missing semicolons or things like that isn't exactly a issue on that case. They'll just, it's not going to be a big deal. What is going to be a big deal is whether this criteria is met or not. So you may be able to get away with, well, technically not working code because, well, it complains about a semicolon or a malformed, uh, I don't know, like a heading that we have, like say this public reservation thing, they'll give this part normally, but if this is slightly malformed, you may be able to get away with that. You won't be able to get away though with things like say in part B, uh, not correctly calling the uh, res.get room number or 
not even using that function in the first place because if we go back into the question it tells us that we can indeed use uh, the methods that are available already available in the reservation and hotel classes which when we go all the way to the top we see uh, right here so get room number and then the reservation class which we have always used so these are the little things you have to keep in mind basically the logic of the code of the problem sorry has to be correct but the formatting they care less about the formatting really they just want to see whether the correct methods have been called and the correct me methodologies or logic like in this case are you supposed to use if else or a for loop so those things those have to be correct and whether you're returning the correct values when needed and whether you're supposed to even return in the first place and whether you're checking certain logic correctly they care about the logic part not necessarily the syntax i mean you would probably want to make it readable but yeah that's basically about it so yeah thank you for watching this video whatever this has been and uh, yeah thank you